This is a good tip if you have a uh, center hatch in a uh, sit on top kayak. Um, one of the issues is this, if you use this hatch for storage, like uh, I always bring my dry box, it's got my keys and wallet and headlamp and cell phone and stuff. And sometimes if you just put it inside this hatch, if you start getting in rocky weather or water, um, starts bouncing around or if you forget about it and uh, um, car uh, mount your uh, kayak, uh, these things can slide and get shifted under all over the place. So I've done this on this kayak, but also on my uh, tarpon 140, it worked really well. You just get some of this uh, swim tubes and then roughly cut it so that it makes a circle that fits just inside of your kayak reels and then stuck a PCV tube in there and it's basically going to create a kind of a half circle that's going to mount inside there then you're going to have a place where you could put your stuff and it's not going to slide around and get lost and then once you've got that all you got to do is basically just get it in there Join them together, and then you can turn it to whatever the farthest width. I have a support right here, but then you've got your little pocket there. Then uh, I keep my leaders in there, and then I'll have my uh, dry box, as well as uh, I could put uh, my battery box in there. And I don't have to worry about them getting lost, because uh, that'll keep them corralled in there. So that's a nice little tip there. The next tip is the always useful Ziploc bag. Okay, And I use, specifically use one for my fish finder. Uh, multiple reasons why one of the basic ones is for just carrying it around especially if you don't have one of those screen covers uh, at least if you put it in a, a ziploc bag you have a, a little bit of scratch resistance to less worried about um, then the second usage that it's really particular for me but imagine it helps out for anybody is once you have it mounted in your kayak okay for me, because I have the motor and anytime there's a lot of chop, I get a lot of, a lot of overspray on my stuff. Uh, everything gets doused in water. So uh, what I do is I just put this Ziploc bag over the top and then it protects uh, splash over from the back as well as just normal water coming down or even rain. Um, in general, I can still see it, but most of the time I'm not, when I'm on the way, I don't even have it on, it's just no use. Then I'll get to wherever I'm at, I'll shut down the motor, where I'm starting fishing, and then I can just take it off and be able to just use it like usual. Then once again, uh, once I start running again, I can put it back on. I generally can see through the plastic, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, you do want to watch out because these do put off a lot of heat or a decent amount of heat that will build up inside the bag and magnify with the sun, so you don't want to keep it too bound up for too long. And then uh, when I'm done, I just put it back in the Ziploc bag, throw it in my bag, and transport it home. Here's another tip for you. Um, if you're staging your kayak the night before, or maybe you're on a trip and you're going to have your kayak up on the roof rack for a couple days, um, is to have some sort of supports. Uh, one of the things I do is I put a little throw pillow, and that basically, well, I've got this one, and that craft bar so that the... Uh, kayak is not just sitting on these cradles um, because what will end up is you'll start getting that tin can effect. Um, the other thing I've got is a basic uh, wood plank there that holds the kayak just above. I have a lot more weight than a normal kayak because of the motor mount and that puts a lot more weight on the back so I want to try to support that when I'm not using it. Um, so I just got a plank, cut it to length, and it just basically holds the back end in a, a sturdier point than the soft plastic. But, as you see, if I take off the, uh, the, the plank there, this pillow supports it so that there's not that much weight on 
these side supports it's just a little bit okay versus having it out then all the weight is just on those two points so this gives it a support all the way across and that'll help uh, with preventing that tin can effect on your kayak this next tip is these Tyco Electronics Raychem heat shrink Duracell butt splices that's the packaging there got these over at uh, Home Depot and basically all they are is for uh, wire to wire connections um, and actually the only thing that I've got wires on in my kayak is basically the uh, battery for my uh, fish finder slash GPS uh, I use these uh, two prong uh, trailer light connectors um, I get them at AutoZone for like two fifty three bucks and it's just got a male female they're universal or just swappable just different directions um, these things corrode out, corrode out pretty quickly. I think I get usually about three to four months out of them before they either start corroding or the um, connections start breaking off because they go on pretty snugly because they are supposed to be waterproof. But then to get them off, sometimes you got to twist them. And then if they're weakened from the corrosion, these little um, pieces will start breaking off. Same thing, I like they'll get a lot of corrosion on the inside of these. So every three or four months if i start having bad connection issues i go ahead and just swap these out so i've got one on this side with the battery and the one side that goes to the uh, fish finder um, before i was uh, using a soldering iron and then you have to use flux and then you have to use a solder and then you have to use um, dielectric grease and then put over a heat shrinking over it to make sure it's waterproof because if you get that exposed to salt water those wires will corrode really quickly uh, even faster than this tin stuff. So I would do that. My my soldering abilities is minimal, nominal. I don't do a lot of soldering, and they usually came up all gunked out and half soldered and half just crap and uh, bulky, and the wires sticking out, and then uh, with the dielectric grease, sometimes totally encasing it, sometimes not. The shrink wrap somewhat correct and sometimes maybe a wire be poking out of it so just wasn't a clean solid connection that I was confident about then I found those these guys at um, Home Depot they're kind of are a waterproof connector and what it is is just a standard splice connector that you just get for wiring normal stuff but what they've done is that they've added a um, which I guess is like dielectric grease on the inside except that it's um, some other chemical that melts so when it's applied to heat, it liquefies and then goes back to solidifying as it dries. And then the outside plastic covering is actually a shrink plastic as well. So when you, um, you, you put it on the wires, strip the wire ends on both sides, put the butt connector, um, crimp them on both sides so then it's solidly crimped. Then uh, what you do is you basically will uh, apply heat with either a heat gun or what like I use which is just a basic lighter and then you'll see the gel on the inside turn liquid where it starts almost if you keep heating it enough the center will shrink because that's what you want to start off first is, is to get that the liquefied the heat uh, shrink tube will condense and it'll start pushing that liquid out to the ends then you start hitting the ends and then that basically seals off the uh, the ends to the wiring making it totally 100% waterproof and then the uh, wire and metal parts encapsulated in that gel or a solid no longer gel after it cools and then you have a very solid collect, uh, connection that you can see is solid and it's waterproof and you don't have to second guess yourself about it so that's a uh, Raycam heat shrink Duracell butt splices and that made by Tyco Electronics. There's a 10 pack. I think they were like seven bucks. So a little bit pricey, but not too bad. Um, definitely worth it for the confidence level that I gained from my electronic stuff. So anyways, that's that tip. Okay, and so the last final uh, tip I've got for this video, is, which is actually my favorite, is uh, my constant battle against corrosion. Salt water kills everything. So what have I come up with is specifically for is to stop rusting hooks is um, I bought these uh, Betty Crocker little dessert holders as they come in a little two pack. They're snack containers with lids and um, they kind of have the little O-ring. Definitely not waterproof. Neither are these little guide boxes with these O-rings. But combined they make a decent uh, 
water stoppage unless you're just uh, submerging it. But the tip I've come up with is I get these and then I get a paper towel folded up so it's kind of cushiony and multi-levels there. Put the hooks in it and then I sprays it with um, the stuff that I use is similar to like a Corrosion X. Um, you can use WD-40 or any of the light uh, lubricants. Uh, the Corrosion X and the stuff that I use, that T9 stuff, is that you spray it on and then when it dries it puts a light little layer on the metal and that's what protects against the corrosion. So I go ahead and just put the, the little pad on the bottom, put the hooks there, spray them with that oil, and then now they're coated with the oil and they're encased with that pad in there and I just shut it up like usual. Salt water gets on it, it's no big deal, they've got the oil on it. Same when I put a hook back in here or some new hooks, they'll bounce around, they'll get coated in that oil and uh, they're coated and safe as well and that prolongs them and that's definitely resolved my corrosion hook problem. So I would go fish, um, have these hooks in there and then within a week the whole thing would be all just rusted out hooks. I have to throw them away, go back, spend 20 bucks on replacing all the hooks and so forth. This way they all stay nice and uh, corrosion free. Um, the biggest negative is like uh, I do keep uh, another pack like this with my full packs of hooks. Same with these, I'll just store them in there and that does, gives it a double protection in the case and these. But still, what happens when you use these are, you have wet hands, you're out fishing, uh, your hands are wet with salt water. You open them up, stick your finger in there and then you dig out a hook. You're touching all the other hooks, you're getting salt water inside these pads and then you close it up, you put it away. Next week when you go out and get these, they're all rusty again, okay? And these little uh, descriptive papers absorb the salt water perfectly and allows them to basically submerge in the salt water from your fingertips there and hold the water and not even evaporate. And uh, then again, you just lose a whole pack of uh, baits there. So I try to leave my um, new baits where I've got some in here and then I'll leave the pack in here and uh, not open them and they'll stay pretty waterproof. But then uh, I have my loose hooks that I'm not afraid to stick my wet hands in and I know that they're not going to corrode out after that. So that's my best tip there.